Hello and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. If you saw my last video, I talked about my current favorite mists and toners. And when I was doing that video, I realized that I figured this would be a good project to do over the summer where I pick a specific type of product and then talk to you guys about what I am currently using and loving. Uh, not necessarily like an exhaustive list of my all time favorite products, but just like I said, the ones that I'm using currently now. Um, some of you requested uh, that I do my favorite masks and there were also several for SPF. So I'm going to do masks today. I will definitely be doing SPF in the next few weeks. I think for my next one, I will actually be doing something fragrance related. So for my perfume lovers out there, I think you will enjoy my next video that I have coming up. But for this video, we're talking about masks. And before I do jump into the video, I just wanna make note of the nail polish that I am wearing today, which I am just absolutely in love with. It is made by Cupid and Psyche and the color is Aphrodite. And I figured I would just go ahead and mention it right off the bat because when I do wear nail polish, a lot of you guys ask what color that I have on. So I thought I would just go ahead and show it to you. It's kind of like a really pretty pinky gray taupe color, like beigey, almost like a grayish, but with a lot of pink in it. So I absolutely love this color and it's kind of crazy because over the, you know, the pandemic situation over this last year, I think I have painted my nails more in the last year than I have since high school. I used to wear nail polish all the time in high school and then that just kind of faded away. And then, yeah, I mean, I'll get pedicures every now and then, but I very rarely paint my nails, but I've just kind of gotten into that over this last year. So I'm really enjoying having some nail polish on my nails. Pink Moon yeah. actually sent me this nail polish. So thank you, Pink Moon, for doing that. I don't know if they are carrying the Cupid and Psyche nail polishes right now on the Pink Moon website. I think it's either come Coming, or will be coming soon, uh, but you can get the Cupid and Psyche lipsticks on Pink Moon. Right, so let's go ahead and get to the task at hand here where I am talking to you all about my favorite masks that I am currently using. The first one is the Moana mask from Hanua. You can see that it's this really nice, thick, kind of clay-based mask that is super, super creamy. And I do really, really love the texture of this mask. As I was mentioning, it's really thick and really creamy. It's almost got this kind of a bounce when you put it on your skin. It's very hard to explain, but it's just really thick and creamy, but it smooths over the skin almost like a mousse. I think that's the best way to describe it. Let's dive into the details regarding the Moana mask from Hanua. It is $38 for 50 mils. So this is just loaded with incredibly beautiful ingredients. It has limu koa, I hope I'm saying that correctly, limu koa, that is Hawaiian spirulina. This is a blue-green algae that is very high in antioxidants, which is going to help boost cell regeneration, help with premature aging. There's also lao kahi in here, and again, I do not know if I'm saying that correctly. It's the Hawaiian word for plantain. This is a small broadleafed herb that is very commonly found uh, probably in your own garden, but this is a potent skin healing plant that has been used in traditional medicine, including Hawaiian medicine. Uh, there's aloe vera, which of course is very soothing, uh, willow bark, which is going to help exfoliate. There is a specific notation currently on the website, the Hanua website, that says there's just a tad bit more of the willow bark in the batch that's going out right now. So if you were to order from the Hanua website, you would be getting a batch that has a little bit more willow bark in it. So it might feel just a little bit more active for you. Uh, there's also Hawaiian honey, licorice root, olena, which is Hawaiian turmeric. There's Hawaiian sandalwood. So let's talk about the scent of this mask because for me, it is a very aromatherapeutic experience. There is jasmine CO2, rosemary, sage, neroli, and petite grain. Now, I mostly get petite grain from here, more so than neroli, and the difference between petite grain and neroli is that the petite grain is the essential oil that you get from the twigs, leaves, and stems of the bitter orange tree, whereas neroli comes from the blossoms, uh, steam distilled blossom extract. I just really love the scent of petite grain. I love neroli as well, but 
What I'm getting from here is just a little bit more green and a little bit more bitter uh, than just like straight up neroli. So it's not super sweet, but it is really, it's really lovely. It's very relaxing and calming to me. I just absolutely love the scent. And I tend to reach for this if I just want something that I feel like is active in terms of clarifying my pores, you know, actually cleaning my skin in that way, uh, refining the pores. But then I also love it because it's very soothing, calming. And like I said, I just love the scent of it. So it's just kind of this overall beautiful experience, especially applying it, like I said, kind of that bouncy, moussey, creamy texture is just gorgeous. So I am still loving this. This has been on favorite lists uh, in the past and I'm continuing to absolutely love it. Another mask that I am just head over heels in love with is the Daphna Revival Bioactive Beauty Mask. And you can see here that it is like a cream-based mask and then it has the encapsulated bits of charcoal within the mixture. So I will talk a little bit more in depth about how I like to use this mask and the different ways you can use this mask, but you can see it's very creamy. And then once you start massaging the mask onto your skin, uh, you do see that the charcoal bits, the encapsulated charcoal do break up. And out of all the masks that I have, I think this is the one that produces the biggest results for me. On the website, it says that your skin will look renewed and it's going to unify the tone. It gives you a dewy, hydrated glow, and it also helps reduce the effect of pollutants and free radicals in the environment. I wholeheartedly agree that it gives you a very dewy, radiant glow. I really do feel like it does unify that tone, as it says on the website. I just love how it makes my skin look. It really does hydrate and kind of plump and just makes your skin look super glowy. So I really, really love using this mask. Sometimes I will use it as like a flash mask in the shower. If I'm showering before I'm gonna film, if I just really want to impart a really lovely glow onto my skin, I reach for this one. Let's go ahead and talk about the ingredients and the price. I don't think I mentioned the price. It is a little bit on the expensive side. It's $85 for 50 mils. I do find though that you you actually don't need to use that much. And this has lasted me quite a while. This is still the jar that I got from the Clean Beauty Box. I can't remember how long ago that was, but anyway, it's lasted so far for many, many months. Um, this has ginseng in it, which is rich in vitamins and antioxidants. There's reishi, which is high in beta glucans, which is going to help promote healthy cell growth. There's capsulated charcoal, which is going to help capture the free radicals. Aloe vera, of course, hydrating and soothing. Thing. There's also shea butter in here, which is going to decrease inflammation, help restore elasticity. There's ginkgo biloba, which is high in plant flavonoids. Um, so those are very potent antioxidants as well. And then there's rose water in here, which is going to help reduce redness, help calm inflammation, and also provides great hydration. And as far as the scent, I definitely think it has that beautiful, like very, very light, delicate rose scent. So nothing overpowering, but it definitely... It definitely smells like rose water, but like I said, not a super strong rose water. So if you don't love rose, I still would recommend giving this a try because it is just such a delicate, mild, rosy scent. Um, I will definitely, definitely be getting this as soon as I run out. Like I said, it's become probably my favorite mask, or I should say the most efficacious mask if I want to impart like a really nice glowy radiance to my skin. In terms of how I like to use it, um, when I was showing you how it looked on my hand, I actually just apply it straight to a clean face, but I apply it directly to my skin and then I just start massaging right away. So I do lean a little bit dry. My skin's pretty normal these days, but it does lean a little bit dry. And I don't find that activating the charcoal right off the bat is drying or irritating or anything like that for my skin. But if you do have really, really dry skin, you might wanna start by patting it on your face, letting the moisturizing properties do their thing, and then you break up the charcoal and then leave it on your skin for a few minutes. Um, I think if you have like combination oily skin, even with my type of skin, uh, breaking up the charcoal bits right away, like I said, has not caused me any problems. In fact, that's the way I prefer to use it. So I think this is one of those kind of masks that you can like cater it to your own needs, what you enjoy. I don't really think there's gonna be a wrong way to use it. 
But anyway, I do highly recommend it and I will definitely be getting this again in the future right away as soon as I run out of this or as soon as I'm getting close to running out because I always want to have it. So now we're moving into some Live Botanical masks, which I don't think is going to be any big shock to you all. You guys know my deep and abiding love for Live Botanical and she, Carolyn, she makes some of my most favorite masks of all time. Let's go ahead and start talking about the Live Botanical Tidal Moon Mask. This is $60 for 50 mils. And this beautiful color, kind of tealy bluish color comes from Blue Algae. The texture on this one feels like a very thin balm. It's like a cream balm hybrid that feels super, super luscious on the skin. So this is a very rich moisturizing mask. I think it's great for the winter, obviously when your skin is feeling a little bit more parched from, you know, maybe central heating. But I also find that this is really nice for the summertime when you might find your skin getting a little bit more dry or sensitive from just like outdoor activity, maybe being in a swimming pool, the ocean, using more SPF than usual, or maybe using a stronger SPF than usual can really dry out the skin. So I think this can be used year around, but specifically in the middle of winter and middle of summer, I find this to be really, really soothing. Um, it's got hydrating raw honey in it. And I believe the raw honey is local from Hood River, the honey that she uses in this mask. Like I said, there's blue algae. It's a sustainable source of blue algae, and it's going to uh, provide essential fatty acids, sterols, ceramides, and it also helps improve clarity and promote cellular renewal. There's bio-fermented may apple in here, which is high in proteins that help improve cellular longevity. There's also Shisandra CO2 extract. Now, Shisandra in TCM, in traditional Chinese medicine, is an adaptogen um, that is considered a tonic for vitality and encourages harmony and balance. And topically, it's been shown to support suppleness and firmness of your skin. There's also milk thistle seed oil in here, which is uh, high in an antioxidant called silamarin. I don't know if I'm saying that correct, silamarin, which balances oil production. So that makes this mask appropriate for acne prone skin. And it's also the milk thistle seed oil is also antioxidant rich. There's also organic and regionally sourced hazelnut seed oil in here and the scent is really, really divine. It smells sweet because there's that honey in here as well, but there's also cedar and fir, and I'm pretty sure that those are regionally sourced as well. One thing I wanna make note of in terms of Live Botanical is if you go to her website, she specifies the, you know, she'll tell you of course when things are organic, which most things are, and also the ingredients that are regionally sourced. Carolyn makes a lot of effort to get her ingredients from regional sources so as to cut down on the carbon and footprint and also support our local businesses and farmers here in the Portland area. The next mask I'm going to tell you about is the Live Botanical Glowing Honey Mask. This is $36 for 50 mil. And you can see this is just a deep, rich honey color. I usually put a toner on my skin or just apply it to damp skin just to help it spread easier. But you can see here that even on my dry hand, it really does smooth over your skin pretty easily. I mean, it pulls just a little bit, but I do highly recommend either putting this over um, a toner or damp skin because it just makes the experience a little bit more smooth. Now, again, let's talk about this local organic raw honey that Carolyn uses. This is going to be a fantastic humectant. I mean, honey in general is a great humectant. It's high in vitamins and minerals. It also contains gluconic acid, which is a mild acid that it's going to help refine and brighten the skin. And then honey as well is just naturally antibacterial. So great again for acneic skin. There's whole organic rose and chamomile as well as roots of marshmallow and dandelion. So these herbs are locally sourced by the botanical and then they are freshly dried in house and then they are powdered right before being added to the honey mixture and this helps uh, maintain the potency of the plant compounds. There's also organic papaya in here which provides a mild exfoliation. There's organic chia seed and then there's also super critical rosehip. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what that super critical rosehip means. These are these CO2 extractions and I had to refresh my memory exactly on what this process is but what happens is the CO2 is highly 
pressurized to a critical point where it's no longer a liquid and it's no longer a gas. And then in this state, the CO2 can effuse through solids. So in this case, it would be the rosehip. Uh, so it effuses through the solids like a gas and then dissolves the materials like a liquid. So after this process, the CO2 evaporates, leaving the pure rosehip seed oil. So doing this process helps um, keep the valuable nutrients intact from the whole rosehip, including the skin and the pulp. And within the skin and the pulp is where a lot of these nutrients reside. So that's the deal with the supercritical, you know, CO2 extraction of the rose hip, as well as other ingredients I've mentioned already in the video. Like I think the Moana mask has the um, CO, jasmine CO2 is what I said, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, also in this mask is cold pressed jojoba, and there's also essential oils of rose and chamomile. So this has a very herbaceous, green, rosy chamomile scent. It's not super sweet in terms of the rose. I mean, it does smell kind of sweet because of the honey, but the, the flowers and the herbs in here definitely lean more towards that herbaceous aspect, not so much like hyper sweet or powdery or anything like that. Now this is really similar to the laurel honey mask. I'm blanking on what the exact name is of the laurel one. They're very, very similar. I would say that if you tend to like those fall autumnal spicy scents, then you might be more drawn to the laurel one. Uh, but I do think the Lib Botanical is just a little bit smoother and I do believe that it is a little bit uh, lower in price. So both of them are beautiful. Both of them are, I mean, I love using both of them. This is the one I have right now. Also, I do want to mention that I like using this as a flash mask in the shower. I find it does a really nice job of cleansing. If you want sort of like a thicker kind of balmy cream type of cleanser and you want to stick with her line, then I would recommend using actually the honey mask as a cleanser. And then finally from Live Botanical, this is my last Live Botanical mask that I'm going to talk about here, is the Greenhouse Glow Antioxidant Mask. And this is $48 for 50 mils. As you can see, this is a solid mask, but you activate it with water, which I'll talk about here in a second. But I do want to show you what the texture looks like before you actually do add water to it. Very smooth, very creamy, kind of that balmy texture, similar to the Tidal Moon Mask. But I would say this one feels a little bit thinner. The Tidal Moon Mask definitely has kind of a thicker, more balmy texture. So as I said, you activate this with water. What I did was I put a little bit of the mask in this little glass ramekin. So I'm mixing it up with the water right now. And I'm gonna put this on the end of this brush so you can see what the texture looks like. And I actually love applying it with a fan brush. It feels so cooling, so smooth. It's just so beautiful. And I love, love, love this texture. So hopefully you can kind of get a sense of what happens to this after you mix it with the water. Let's just dive into the activation with the water just a little bit more, just so it's really clear. Um, this balm is activated by water to extract powerful phyto compounds to promote circulation, oxygenation, and remineralization, which encourages an even tone. Now, in terms of ingredients, there's kapuaku butter in here, which provides very deep moisturization. It's highly emollient. There's cold pressed seed oils of cranberry, raspberry, and pumpkin. All of those are high in vitamin A and E, carotenoid, and linoleic acid. There's plantain. I think we already talked about plantain. I think that in the Moana mask. Uh, plantain, bee balm, and self-heal. And all of these herbs are going to help stimulate cell generation. Um, of course, they are loaded with antioxidants. There's also pumpkin seed powder in here. I had forgotten about that one. And so this provides um, antioxidants, amino acids, zinc, vitamin K. Vitamin K is great for helping to brighten the skin. There's also oatmeal and snow mushroom. Now these are high in polysaccharides, which help the humectants penetrate deeper into the skin, as well as all the beautiful, you know, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals. They help those compounds 
bronze get deeper into your skin as well. So I cannot rave enough about this mask. I know it kind of throws people a little bit that you need to activate it with the water, but for me, it's so easy. It's really simple. I find that it's easier than using a, a powder dry mask, which for whatever reason, I still feel like, you know, takes a little bit of extra effort that sometimes I am just not that into. But if I have one of these guys in my bathroom already and a wooden spoon, and I have wooden spoons just all over my bathroom, then it just feels super easy to just put a little bit in here, whip it up, and then it's just ready to go. And it smells amazing. I love the color. I love the effect that it has on my skin. You know, it does leave it very nourished and hydrated. And it's one of those masks, actually all of the masks um, that I've talked about here, I don't have any issues with the time frame that it is on my skin. I would say for Moana, probably after a half an hour, I'm ready for it to get off my face because like I was saying, it is a little bit active because of that willow bark. Um, but I have not had any issues if I leave that Daphna mask on my skin for, you know, 45 minutes upwards to an hour. And I never have any issues with these live botanical masks, um, you know, making my skin feel really sensitive or irritated if I do leave it on longer than is, uh, advised on the packaging. So that pretty much wraps it up for my five favorites right now. I do have a few honorable mentions though, because even though I don't typically reach for the dry masks, like I said, but when I am going to reach for a dry mask. The one I have been loving so much right now is the Earthwise Beauty Imhotep's Balsam Face Mask. This is 32 grams, and so that is $60. And it also comes in a sample size, which is 4.2 grams for $14. Now, I think this is kind of obviously the uh, 32 grams that they have listed on their website that is a weight, but this is the same, you know, 50 mil jar size of that all of these have been. And then this is what the powder looks like. And then I decided to just go ahead and mix a little bit up here since I had some extra water. So, um, Ava, of Earthwise Beauty describes this as almost like a compress. Now I probably needed more water in here guys, so I apologize. You can see that I have it very thick here as a paste. Um, I probably would put in a little bit more water, but actually not very much water. What I usually do is I add too much water to these masks and then I end up adding more of the dry mask into the water and then I feel like I'm wasting it or just using too much product. I would just do some spritz of hydrosol either on my face or into the little ramekin. And then also what I love to do is add in a couple of drops of oil. So if you love Earthwise Beauty, I think adding in Rosa would be beautiful into this mask, which I actually have done. And thinking about it, I do think that the new uh, cleansing oil that Ava came out with the Paloma cleansing oil, which is really a multitasker. You can use it in your hair. You can use it on your body. You can use it, you know, leave it on your skin. You can use it as a cleansing oil, obviously, because that's the name of the product. But I do think it would be lovely to put maybe a pump of the Paloma into this face mask. So Ava describes this as a fresh compress made of roots, barks, and freshly crushed alemi resin. There's birch bark in here, which contains betalinic acid, which is going to stimulate collagen and inhibit elastic taste. So it's going to be really good for mature skin concerns. There's astragalus root, which is another TCM adaptogen, which is going to be very immune supporting when it is used as a tonic. I'm not too sure how much information there is about astragalus used topically, but in general, um, it has been used as an adaptogen in TCM to um, support the immune system. There's also marshmallow root in here, which is going to be very soothing, softening, and hydrating. And that's because marshmallow root is mucilaginous, so it's got that mucilage, which is going to be, of course, hydrating and soothing for the skin. There's also licorice root, which is another traditional TCM herb, and it's going to help brighten your skin, so it's really good for sunspots. There's also comfrey in here, which is beautiful for regenerating your skin. It helps relieve dry skin. It's been used for years in Western herbalism for uh, wound healing. There's also wild ply. I've never heard of this one before, but ply, P-L-A-I. This is in the same family as ginger and turmeric. So this is very antibacterial, antioxidant, but also cooling. So it's the wild ply essential oil that is in this particular mask. And while ginger and turmeric are very warming herbs, this herb apparently is on the cooling side. And then there's also the alemi tree resin that I had mentioned before. Um, this is in the same family as frankincense. 
And this has been used traditionally as a wound healer and it also helps create very supple skin. So when I'm in the mood to do a dry mask and I just wanna sit down, do the ritual of being very mindful of how much powder I'm using and how much water and some hydrosols, as well as adding in an oil, I do really like that process. I just need to give myself that moment to you know, enjoy it rather than thinking of it as a chore to whip up the mask. But when I get myself in that mindset, I really love the Imhotep's Balsam from Earthwise Beauty. I think it's a really lovely way to experience herbalism and what herbalism can provide in skincare. So if you've been leaning towards that, I do highly recommend uh, this mask from Earthwise Beauty. And then just real quick, I wanna give shout outs to my two favorite shower masks that I am using currently, but I would say that these are my two favorites. This is Aurora by Stark Skincare, and then I have the Heart of Gold Sea Change Cleansing Balm. Let's go ahead and talk about Sea Change first. This is $44 for 50 mils. Uh, Allie, who is the creator of Heart of Gold, she also has a six mil sample for $7, which I think is phenomenal. Just love it that she gives that option. Um, I did also forget to mention that the Live Botanical products are also available in little minis. So I just really love how these uh, companies, these brands are providing those so that you don't have to shell out the money for the full price if you're not 100% sure if you're going to love it. So anyway, back to the ingredients of the Heart of Gold Sea Change. There is salt butter, shea butter, meadow foam seed oil, moringa oil, castor seed oil, and then essential oils of fennel seed, grapefruit peel, and Roman chamomile. And Ali has included this trio of beautiful essential oils because it's going to help uh, lymphatic circulation and and also to help decrease puffiness. For me, the scent is super aromatic of the fennel. I don't really get so much of the grapefruit, but I think the grapefruit does kind of balance out that fennel seed. I'm sure you guys know what fennel smells like, kind of that licorice -y, anise type of smell. And then the Roman chamomile, I love Roman chamomile. I prefer it to German chamomile because Roman has this beautiful apple note. So just all together, it's just this sweetly fruity herbaceous scent that just kind of makes you feel like you're drinking a really soothing cup of tea. I just, I absolutely love it. I use this all the time, you know, just as a cleanser and rinse it off right away after I've massaged it. But like I said, these are my two favorite shower masks. And so what I do is I put this on before I get into the shower and then just do my stuff in the shower and then rinse it off. So I love keeping it on my face for maybe, you know, three to five minutes while I'm taking a nice warm shower and kind of let the steam from the shower um, enhance the activity of the cleanser. And then the Stark Aurora, this is $46 for 60 mils. And this is what it looks like. It is just so, so beautiful. I love this orange color. Now Jess from Stark calls this her cleanse and hydrate balm. This has cocoon butter, mango seed butter, uh, Takuma butter, pumpkin seed oil, green tea seed oil. There's super critical CO2, sea buckthorn fruit oil. So whereas in the Live Botanical Honey Mask, there was the super critical rosehip seed oil, Aurora contains the super critical CO2 to sea buckthorn fruit oil, and then there's also orange peel wax in here. So for me, I do get that blend of orange and also the cocoa butter. I think, yeah, I did. Did I mention that there's cocoa butter in here? There's cocoa butter in here. I might have skipped over that one. So it kind of has this like bitter, sweet orange scent that I really, really love. I think that if you are an orange lover, if you like those citrusy scents in your skincare, this would be a huge recommendation from me to you to give this a try. And then I just realized I forgot to show you the texture of the Sea Change. You can see that it's a nice, thick, white, creamy balm cleanser. And as I've already mentioned, I really love using both of these as a shower mask. So I hope you guys are enjoying this series of me doing a deep dive into my favorite products. I think I will continue through this over the summer because it, it gives me that chance to really dive into the ingredients and just also refresh my own memory of what exactly is in all these products. Like for instance, just revisiting the super critical CO2, what that is all about. Um, you know, I just really love of diving into these ingredients and sharing that information with you all. So hopefully you guys are down for this series over the summer. Like I said, SPF will be coming very, very soon, but I do think I'm going to be doing a little fragrance detour um, next week. But then after that, we'll dive into SPF and let me know what other types of products you would like to see that I am currently using and loving. So thank you guys so much for watching. As I always say, I appreciate you all so much. I appreciate you watching my videos.
videos. If you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so because that would mean so much to me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.